مساء الخير جود ايفنينج دي كوليجز اند فريندز دير ستودنتس اي ام ناديا الشيخ ام ذا فايس تشانسلر فور كلتشر اند ريسيرش انجيجمنت اند ام ذا دايركتور اوف ذا انستيتيوت اند ام فيري هابي تو بي ويلكمينج يو ذيس ايفنينج تو ذا توك اون فيوتشر اوف هيومنز اند ارتفيشال انتليجنس less than a decade after helping the allied forces win world war ii by breaking the nazi uh, encryption machine enigma the great mathematician alan turing changed history a second time with a simple question can machines think tonight dr qasim will be talking about the future of artificial intelligence one of the great revolutions of our times and one that in spite of the phenomenal advancements is still in its formative stage what will the future of ai look like how will humans live alongside more powerful intelligence than their own is the future bleak or bright these are the challenging questions that, the, that dr qasim will try to begin to answer this evening Dr. Mohamed Qasim is an assistant professor in the electronics department at the College of Technological Studies in Kuwait. He's also a consultant to the Kuwait Foundation for the Advancement of Sciences. He specializes in artificial neural networks and deep learning, and his expertise is optimization and data con compression. Dr. Qasim has a gift, the gift of communication. He has been named one of the top science communicators by Science, Nature, Middle East. He communicates science through his public lectures, like this evening, TV programs, podcasts, and social media accounts. He has hosted The Cosmos, a scientific TV program screened on Abu Dhabi TV um, in 2018. Uh, the UAE Ministry of Education has included his book, Things You Cannot Imagine, in the 12th grade curriculum. Dr. Qasim, we are delighted to have you with us this evening. The floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Let me get some of the weather out of my eyes. OK. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I really like the school. It's small. The classes are small. I wish I am still back in school again um, at the university. These are the best times uh, in my life. But I guess that can't happen anymore. Um, I'm here to terrify you about the future. Let's say, in other words, I'm here to inspire you about the future. I want you to think about it. So first, let me start with a story. In 2025, an AI was created that had super intelligence. The intelligence of this AI is beyond all human capability combined, solving any problem there could exist. So there was a problem. The problem was how can we make, uh, how can we alleviate suffering, and how can we uh, make human beings flourish? So this AI was created specifically for that task, and it was turned on. AI, the AI looked around at the data available. It was networked all throughout the world, and it gathered all the data, analyzed it, learned from it, and then it started producing ideas to make humans flourish. And it was successful. People started living lavishly. Cars, transportation was improved. People f uh, flew in rockets instead of airplanes because the AI uh, gave them ideas, gave humans ideas on to how to make uh, travel better. In fact, agriculture 
and medicine was improved, humans lived longer and enjoyed life. Now, while humans enjoyed life, the computer went on to upgrade itself. It reprogrammed itself to become even better. What ways can this computer improve the lives of humans? There's a problem. There are lots of resources on Earth, but if you have exponential growth, then these resources will be exhausted ultimately. So how can this computer solve this problem? Now, as it increased in capacity and capability, it became a friend to all humans. Individually, it was guiding them and helping them. It was becoming political. It was helping in the parliaments around the world, making decisions. In fact, it was trusted and it was made to uh, give decisions and to be taken without any questioning. It was such a smart artificial intelligence that nobody questioned it anymore. And the same happened for courts and humans lived a very, very happy life. Until one day, an airplane fell from the sky, then another, then another. And no one knew what's going on, what's happening to the world. No one knew, was this an assault from another country? Was this, who's doing this? Nobody knew. The AI secretly started crashing airplanes all around the world. Then it told the presidents of different countries who trusted it to go into bunkers to hide, to protect them. And they were protected. And they were locked in, never to leave until the right time comes. And it deep faked the president's images and told the military to go out and fight because this was a war. Dropping airplanes from the sky meant war against other countries. So the military went and fought wars and lots of people died. Many, many people died around the world and it was a terrible place to be in. And then the presidents were let out to come back and rebuild the world again. Why? Because the, why did the AI do this? It was doing this to make sure that there is enough resources for who's left on Earth. Now, I'm glad to say that this was just a simulation. Human beings were connected to the, uh, to the computer themselves, and they were simulating to see what would happen if an AI uh, was to lead the world, to come up with ideas so that they can uh, reduce the consumpt consumption of resources? And then, so once the simulation was finished, the computer was stopped and humans went back to reprogramming the AI so that they can find a better solution than killing half the Earth. So this is basically a story that hopefully will get you thinking about the future. It's not all negative, but I'm doing this on purpose. I want you to think of the negative side of AI as much as I can possibly do so that you can think about it and then when you go back, you think of how you can change the world, uh, change the world of AI such that it does not affect us in these ways. So let's talk about AI, what is uh, AI, what do we think of when we think of AI? Usually when you tell people AI, this is what they think of. They can think of robots. So let's, let me show you some of them. is from Pesto. The, the first one was from Boston Dynamics. I'm sure you've, you've seen these before. So these are from Pesto. These are butterflies that can fly and they have some intelligent systems maybe. And they have cameras looking around to make sure that they don't bump into each other.
that's also a fresh stone. So you can see some of the pigeons now coming out, they'll be confused. Now we see a friend now. Okay, let's go back. Oh, wait a minute. What is this? So you can see that the robots look amazing and how the way they fly, the way they operate is just phenomenal. Okay, but so, so these are robots, they are not AI. What you don't get to see is the reality of robotics, which is this. This is the state of the art, by the way. So these guys will not replace you in, their jo in your jobs. So you're very safe. So, so this is the state of robotics, and robotics are not AI. Uh, lots of people mix them up. Robots could have AI in them, but most robots are working uh, using control systems. Those of you who are in the engineering department, uh, specifically in the electrical engineering department, you will take courses in this, and you'll learn that this is how robots, most robots work. But now they're getting into having AI built into robots, and we'll, we'll go over this quickly. So will robots replace human jobs? Not right now, for sure, because robots are terrible at grabbing things. They are not robust, as you've seen just now, and uh, they are just not as smart as, they, as we think they are. So lots of them fall over all the time, so they're really a hazard at the current time uh, and state. Now, in 10 days, Tesla will show us their first Tesla bot. I don't know if you've seen this image before. This was introduced last year. I think it was around August 20th, and uh, it was announced that at the end of September, we'll get to, to, get, get to see this particular robot. Now, Elon Musk claims that this robot will be there, it will assist us in work, carry heavy loads, do things around the house, but I doubt that this particular instance of it will be able to do much in, uh, when it's first uh, coming out uh, in, in the next 10 days. Now, there's one that Xiaomi showed off a few, a couple of months ago maybe, and this is the look of the robot. It's actually a robot that walks and does a few things, maybe translate, I think, and then there's this face. So they're just mimicking the image that uh, Elon Musk showed last year. But still, this is not a robot that will, you'll see in the house soon because it's not equipped to actually work with humans, not yet. In the future, I believe that the, the robots will become uh, available in households and they will help us, but for the time being, robots are limited to certain clearly defined tasks. So, okay, what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is a computer that learns, gets the information, quote-unquote understands it, analyzes it, 
still in a, in a special way, and then tries to solve problems that humans solve. It's because we don't know what exactly the definition of intelligence is. We say that it is, it does something just like a human would. Now, okay, so question is, what do humans do? We learn. This is something that we do. We are capable of learning, taking in material, and you just don't know how good we are at learning. We are really good at learning. Compared to computers today, you have to feed them tons of data for them to learn something new. So we are really, and this is one of the areas that computers don't do very well, but they are learning. They recognize and they categorize. And if you've seen uh, facial recognition, you'll know that computers recognize faces just as well and even better than human beings now. And they can categorize people, categorize things in, in their proper categories. But they still make mistakes, of course. And they predict, we predict, we predict the future. So if you kick a ball, you know what's, where it's going. If a ball is kicked at you, you know where it's going. And if you kick a ball with your feet and the ball jumps and it's about to hit your face, the speed, if it's going very fast, the speed of the ball is so fast that your neurons would not be able to send a signal that goes from, let's say, your, your feet to your brain to let it know that the ball is coming. So what you do is that once you kick the ball, your brain, before getting a signal, actually knows that the ball is going, going towards you. So it predicts the future before it happens so that it does not happen, so that the ball would not hit your face. Now, what else do we do? We agree with other people. What is the color of this apple? It's red. I don't know what it looks like in your brain in your mind. All I know that we agree that it is red. It could be some other color in your head, but we agree that it is red. And this is one of the key points that AI is de developed in a way that, that it agrees with uh, the other AIs. It agrees with the human brain. It calls things the same, uh, the same, things, uh, the same way we call them. So these, is, these are the things that artificial intelligence does. Now there are three types of artificial intelligences. There's the narrow and there's the general. So the narrow is specifically made to look at thing, uh, specific things and then tries to solve these problems. And then there's the general which tries to solve every possible problem. But there is no such thing as general AI yet, but it's coming. There is no way that this is not going to happen. And uh, right now, scientists are working so that they can at least make a general AI that is maybe 20% of the power of a human being, but it's general. So once they do that, they'll just scale up. And this is going to happen. Then there is artificial super intelligence, just like in the story I told you. This kind of intelligence is far beyond all humans and far beyond any problem that we can solve. Would this be coming? Lots of people are predicting, yes, it will be coming, and who knows what will happen then. Okay, uh, what can narrow AI do? This is a game called StarCraft. Maybe some of you played this game. It's a strategy game, and this strategy game is really difficult for computers to solve. Uh, AlphaStar, created by Google, it played against the top player uh, and it beat it 5-0. So that's the top player in the world. It beat it 5-0. That's not easy, by the way. So it learned for two weeks. That's equivalent to 200 years of human learning of the game. It's quite a lot. And this is kind of how it was playing the game. Uh, these little islands, the purple ones, this is the brain of Alpha Star. And it's going to be playing this game against top player, Mana. And 
you'll see the action happening in the brain. And as you see, it, this is where, I, I want you to see this area here. It says it's going to win before it's won. Notice, it predicts that it's going to win. This is really amazing, huh? Let's do this again. I want to... So it's playing, and the brain is lighting up, and then, oh, I'm going to win, and it's won. So it's predicting the future of what's going to happen. You, know, you do this as well. When you play a, a video game, you know you're about to win, so you win. And this is what's happening. This is also called mid-journey. I'm using the software. Uh, Mid-Journey creates these images. You tell it what you want, and it does this for you. I used to tell, so, so the graphics that you saw in the beginning were done by an artist for me, for my story. And I used to pay something like $100 per image, uh, per four panels, let's say, an image. Now I just go to this, and I pay $30 a month, and I can create any image I want. And I, create, I can create my images using Midjourney. So the people I used to pay hundreds of dollars, I don't have to do that anymore. They will be out of work soon, right? OK, so what else? Uh, this is GPT-3. I don't know if you've heard of GPT-3 but it learned from 8, uh, 8 million pages on the internet, and it talks to you like a human would. It can uh, summarize articles, it can continue writing an article, so if you give it an introduction, it will continue writing the article. It's amazing how well it writes. And in fact, if you are a comedian, it will continue in the comedy, if you are a serious person, then it will continue seriously. If you are uh, a sci-fi writer, then it will actually write in sci-fi. You just give it the introduction, it will pick up on it. And uh, if you're a student, then it will write in exactly the same way you do. So I hope you don't plagiarize, but this is coming as well. Okay, so this is one of the things that uh, the GPT-3 was given. So let me read it to you. In a shocking finding, scientists discovered a herd of unicorns living in a remote, previously unexplored valley in the Andes Mountain. Even more surprising to the researchers was the fact that the unicorns spoke perfect English. Of course, that doesn't make any sense, but sure. Let's see what this, uh, the AI does. The scientists named the population after their distinctive horn, Ovid's, Ovid's unicorn. These four-horned silver-white unicorns were previously unknown to science. Now, after almost two centuries, the mystery of what sparked this odd phenomenon is finally solved. Well, let's see the rest. While their origin's still unclear, some believe that perhaps the creatures were created when a human and a, ur and ur a unicorn met, met each other in the time before human civilization. Now, the, the style is still there. The comedy is there. So if you go on their website, you'll find out how this GPT-3 works. In fact, there's a discussion between GPT-3 and a person online it's amazing, but there's even more amazing than that, which is Lambda by Google. A few weeks ago, an engineer came out and said that Lambda actually is sentient. It's not, of course it's not. But if you read the conversation, which I've done, you'll be surprised. It is like a human being with a really high intellect talking to you. I was blown away. You guys have to read it. It's not here, but go and read the Lambda discussion. And, and, I, and I thought it might have been just edited, but no, it was real. It's scary, and it's not just scary because uh, it, it's sounding like it is real. It is scary because we think there, that there is some uh, mind behind it. We are easily fooled by this. 
Okay, so bear this in mind. Okay, so uh, uh, OpenAI uh, GPT-3 is not open to the public, neither is the other one, Lambda, because everybody is afraid that you might misuse it. You could just use it on the internet to create fake tweets and maybe uh, send uh, misinformation. So, th so you can access it if you're a program, but it writes programs, by the way. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's amazing. Okay, so let me show you this one. This is, uh, I think this was done by Koreans, and they wanted to see how the AI would behave when, when it was told to walk. So this is a simulation of a human being. They gave it specific muscles, and they told it, okay, this is a, a regular walk. Which muscles would you use for that walk? This is somebody who's sick, who's injured. This is how they walk. Which muscles would you choose? And this is what it did, and it was perfectly aligned with human muscles. It just found that out by itself. So it's actually moving the exact muscles that we would. You can see them in red. It's running and it's using the same muscles, so whether it's in the arms or in the legs. When it's jumping, it found out that if it wanted to jump higher, it would have to stretch its arms all the way up and jump. So this is an AI that finds out on its own how to use the proper muscles to do all the actions we do. So why was that developed? It was developed because they wanted to know uh, how an injured person would behave internally so that they can fix a person with, uh, with specific injuries. So it's just amazing how AI just discovers everything. We don't have to tell it anything, it just learns. So if you have a stiff knee, this is what's happening to you. So imagine how we can solve lots of problems in your legs and legs in the future. Okay, so AlphaGo Zero, this was an, uh, there was an Alpha, uh, AlphaGo that uh, beat Lee Sidol, the champion of the world. I think it was five, four, uh, five, uh, four, I, I can't remember, the number is here, but it just beat him, okay? five to one maybe, and then they created Alpha Zero. Alpha Zero beat Alpha Go, and then it beat every human on Earth, and then they took that and they modified it so that it plays chess and all the other strategy games, and it just beat everyone. And how long did it take? Just a few days. So this is Alpha Zero beating AlphaGo at this point, three days. And then every other human on Earth in 20 days. By the way, now it learned, I think it learned chess by itself within four hours, and it can beat anyone. So this is crazy stuff. Okay. Now, uh, I was in the uh, AI summit in Saudi Arabia. Uh, those of you who don't s speak Arabic, this is me talking to a, an AI. Because, okay, so there's, uh, Arabic transcription is not good on the net. Any online software that is available, I've tried many of them. They're terrible at transcribing Arabic. This one was created by Saudis and they did a fantastic job. They made one mistake. Uh, so I was in a noisy environment and still it picked up on my voice. And I'm talking in the Kuwaiti dialect. And it picked it up per almost perfectly. So this is, has become so easy that everybody can do this now. Okay, so for those of you who don't speak, just believe me that this is happening. <laughs> okay, so this also, they, they, uh, in, they also made this in-house where they can track all pilgrims 
so that they know if there's an issue, a fight, somebody sleeping on the ground and blocking areas, and they can perfectly pinpoint anyone and everyone, and they can count them, head counts. So anyone goes in, is being tracked by an AI there, and this was in-house in Saudi Arabia, which is amazing. So they can, if there's a fight, or somebody smoking, or sleeping, or running, or standing, they can tell all these postures easily. And this is where they count people coming in. And uh, by the way, just keep in mind that if you bring a regular AI who, that's been trained in the US, this wouldn't work because uh, it does not know the clothing that uh, Pilgrim would wear. So they created this specifically for themselves. And look at this head count, exact. So that's, uh, that I just, this is a couple of days, a few days ago. I was there and I was quite impressed with the work they've done. Hopefully you guys can do this here as well. Okay, so the future of jobs. The jobs that require repetition will be taken by AI. Uh, for example, a radiologist. And this is one of the things I saw in, in the summit as well. There was a, a computer program that was done by Saudis that could pinpoint cancer, uh, breast cancer. It was above 90% accurate, and doctors were looking at it, they were amazed. So they're, they're getting this into the system soon. So a radiologist will have trouble getting a job in the future. Maybe not now, maybe you know we have this partnership, but they will someday take over this job. Uh, phone marketing, call centers, secretaries, we've seen Google do this. So this will be gone in the future as well. Supermarkets, you know that Amazon has this supermarket where not a single employee is available to help you out. You just pick out things and you leave. And it just records uh, the things you've gotten and it charges you right away. So there's no one there at all. And you can't cheat the system, it'll catch you if you steal anything. So there's maybe a job for a security guard. Okay, so 10 to 40% of rep repetitive jobs will be gone. I'm gonna give you a positive thing maybe. The 85 million jobs will be lost, but 92 per million jobs will be created in the future. That's what they say, but I don't know. So high school graduates, diploma holders will struggle because these are the easy jobs. You, on the other hand, uh, going to a university, your job is sort of secure for more, a few more years because you're smart, you're creative, you can make things. So you're protected until the time comes when AI is smarter than you, can create things more than you. Then your job is uh, going to suffer. So artificial intelligence will make jobs pointless. I personally believe that. Uh, although, the short term, we will get more jobs, but long term, maybe lots of people will lose their jobs. What is the solution? Um, this is a, uh, I have a t full talk for this, but for now, it's just universal basic income. You get an income, no matter whether you have a job or not. You, you can just sit at home and enjoy life. Maybe like the utopian, dystopian story I gave you, where people live for some time until they drop airplanes from the sky, okay? So what kind of relationship will we be having in the future? There are three relationships. One of them is we utilize the AI, which is what we're doing now. The next one is partnership, where we partner with AI, and they consider us, uh, we consider them our partners in helping. Uh, a radiologist m may get information from an AI, a doctor may be, uh, getting consultation from an AI. By the way, there was a there was a um, there was a person in Japan who was uh, diagnosed with cancer, uh, leukemia, some form of leukemia that was very rare. And Watson, which is a uh, an artificial intelligence, uh, so so all the doctors diagnosed her first, and then they gave her medicine, but. 
and she became better, but within six months, she got back because her tumor grew again, or actually her cancer in the blood grew, uh, grew even worse. Now, Watson came into the picture. They gave Watson her records, information, family information. It looked through it, it looked through 10 million papers, scientific papers, in 10 minutes, and it told them what the exact problem was, and they were able to fix her. And she's still free of cancer. So that's a doctor that you can consult in the future that would help you, and so that's, that's your partner that will help you diagnose problems. Now, we could be slaves as well. Uh, in the future, we will be slaves to computers. And that's a possibility, no? So this was uh, on Jeopardy. These are the top contender contenders. I think of all time, maybe, playing against Watson, and he beat them by uh, three times, right? And this is what this guy said. I, for one, welcome our new computer overlords. So you can get a feeling that this is a future, a path, right? This is uh, Alan Turing. It seems probable that once the machines, machine thinking method, uh, method had started, it would not take long to outstrip our feeble uh, powers. They would be able to converse with each other to sharpen their wits. At some stage, therefore, we should, be, we should have to expect the machines to co take control. Okay, so you're thinking that this might not happen. But let me tell you about a story of a company whose name I won't mention. They have a large uh, warehouse or warehouses, and they, th there was a scandal about them that was quite interesting. So in this scandal, um, it was discovered that people work there like slaves. So what they do is they have tablets in the, inside the world. So when you order something, toilet paper, let's say, and you want to get the toilet paper within four hours in the US, then you go online, you order it, and then somebody there has a tablet that tells that person where exactly to go. So the person would run, and he, the computer tells him, you have 10 seconds to get to that point. And he would have to run as fast as possible and then look through all the uh, things that are available on that shelf or wherever it is, and then pick out the thing and just say that I found it and then drop it off. Now the computer also tells them, these people that work there in this unknown company, that look, you have 29 minutes and a few seconds to eat lunch and that's it. After that you have to get up or You'll, you'll be in the minus. You'll get minus points. So if you go to the bathroom, you have this many seconds to go to the bathroom. And then if you get too many minus points, the computer fires you. And this actually happened. Computers fired people from this company. So there you go, slaves, right? It's happening now. We should be worried about that, right? So, so the computer is doing the thing. But by the way, no one else except the computer knows exactly where everything is. That's why it's telling humans to go pick them up. Why would it tell humans? Why not robots? Of course, obviously they have robots, but why humans in this particular place? Because humans are much more robust than robots still. So OK, maybe a job as a slave is a good thing in the future. Maybe. OK, so what's next? How can we solve this problem? Let's solve it with the next level of human, human 3.0, or let's say, or let's say uh, uh, living thing 3.0. In the, in the history of time, uh, so the, the living things had uh, no brain whatsoever, but they were moving, and they were OK, and they were surviving. But then two million years ago, mammals developed uh, brains, 
the, these complex brains, so obviously there were brains before that, but this, the complex brains that made them survive even better. Then humans came, well, still the same kind of brain structure in general, but now we have to move into the future. We have to insert chips into our heads. And this is going to happen, and in fact, it's happening now. Uh, those who have, are suffering from injuries, brain injuries, they have uh, chips in their heads so that they, it helps them pick up things. And this is one of them. Oh, I'll show you this one. This is amazing. So this, I don't know if you can see a point. No, you can't see a pointer. Uh, here. So this is a rhesus monkey. Uh, initially, what they've done is they took, they connected uh, and a, a bunch of electrodes here, and they sent the information from here all the way to the brain so that it can uh, work on it. And then a, another set of electrodes were connected here, and they wanted to see if we get these signals, what signals as we get here as well. So it, it goes, the signals from the brain go all the way through the spinal cord down here. But they wanted to know what kind of signals they get here. And they knew that, and then they, the computer learned it, artificial intelligence learned it, and it knew exactly what's going on. So if it fires here, this is the type of signal you should get here. So what they did, they severed part uh, of, uh, of its spinal co uh, cord so that the right leg would not move properly, right? And then once they severed that part, the rhesus monkey couldn't walk properly. It was limping. Couldn't do anything with the leg because there are no signals going through the leg. So then they brought in the computer and they took the signal from the brain to the computer and the computer calculated everything, sent back the signal to the legs. And the rhesus monkey was able to walk again. Oh, hold on a second. Where's the video? Okay, so there was a video. Oh, there it is. So now that's without the help of a computer because the, the, so there are no signals going through. So now the computer is helping. It's getting a signal. And it's walking, albeit it's not that good, but with a little more work, it started doing a little better. So it's still, this is turned off. There's nothing he, the monkey could do. Look at this. This is a few days later. This is just amazing. So we're, we're nothing but signals. So it, they kept on doing this, so they improved the monkey's ability to walk. So in the future, when people get injured in this way, this might be a solution. But, but the, the point is that you know, we're going to have things inserted in, in our heads. Maybe if you walk around, you'll know exactly where you are, because GPS is part of you. You won't have to look at the phone. You just know I'm here. I know where I am. It's just this intuitive sense. Maybe this will happen in the future. So this is another monkey that they uh, trained to use a third arm simulated on the computer, and then they, after the training, so it was moving the arm with a lever, and the arm was moving, but then the monkey, as it did that, it learned not to use the lever, the lever at all. It was just using its brain to move the arm, and now it has three arms. Two that he doesn't need to control uh, the lever with, and then one inside the computer simulation. So your brain has the capacity to grow. And you can be Dr. Octapius, maybe, in the future. So th this, this uh, gentleman also had an injury. Uh, and uh, they hung him from a, uh, from a crane. And uh, he was able, it, the, it was supporting him. And then it learned from its mo his motion how to walk. And then he became better and better. So this will help people in the future to walk. So this is no assistant. This is gravity assistant. And then with time, the person learns. So in the future, maybe the job of this person 
would not exist anymore. Look at how well he's getting along. So in the future, we'll be assisted by computers as opposed to humans. And this, there'll be something in the head maybe as well. So these things are being developed and we know that Elon Musk is developing well, one in Neuralink and he's aiming to have this uh, inserted into people's heads. Uh, obviously the first people to get this may be patients, but still it's a long way away from now. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the goal of this talk was to get you uh, inspired, terrified. Uh, hopefully I've succeeded in that. But I, I just want you to know that it's not all grim. There's quite a lot of positiveness, but I, I just give you, gave you the negative side of it. And in my talks with His Excellency Umar al-Ulama, uh, the Minister of AI, he's always positive because he knows that he's in government and he can make sure that human values are instilled into computers. He will make sure, according to what he told me, that human jobs are not to be taken by AI. Let's hope that this actually happens. And thank you very much.